Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this morning. It's lovely to have you here at West Kilbride Parish Church, and a special welcome if you are visiting with us today. It's lovely to have you in our midst, and a welcome also to those who are joining online today. Just one or two intimations just to draw to your attention just from the sheet. Um, firstly, just about the hub, just to say that Tuesday's hub will be the last Tuesday hub for the moment. Uh, so that's Tuesday the 27th. Uh, but we are continuing the Friday hub uh, throughout the summer. Now, for the Friday hub to continue, we do need volunteers to help uh, with that. So there is a sheet in the lower hall, if you are willing, uh, to come along to um, help serve at the Friday Hub, uh, then we would be delighted to have your name uh, on the sheet. And if you're uncertain about um, what that involves, uh, maybe speak to Billy, speak to myself, um, that, would be, uh, that would be great. Um, but we do feel it's important to keep it going over the summer. Uh, there might be different people uh, who will come into the Hub uh, over the summer period. If you turn over your sheet, you'll see the village larder and uh, the items that they are looking for uh, this month that we're collecting next Sunday. Uh, so please do take a note of them. Uh, and just also to say uh, about the Bibles, uh, we've had this intimation in for a wee while uh, because we have changed Bible translation. We're now using the New Living Translation. Uh, if you'd like a copy of uh, the Bible, it costs £10. Uh, just put your sheet uh, uh, your name on the sheet uh, in the lower hall. Um, but this is the last Sunday that we're going to do that. So if you do want to do it, uh, please do it um, today. And you'll notice a couple of other items, uh, fundraisers uh, that are happening down at South Bank House, which is the house of Audrey Colon. I think those are all the intimations this morning. I want to begin our worship by... Um, reading a very familiar psalm uh, to you. Uh, I want to read Psalm 23, which relates to our passage this morning that we're going to be looking at from Mark's Gospel. So let's hear these words together. And as you listen to these words, uh, perhaps you'd want to just close your eyes just to, to reflect uh, upon them. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows he leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Let's worship God together, and we're going to sing, Come People of the Risen King.
Let's join our hearts and minds together in prayer. Let's pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father, it's good for us to draw near to you this morning because we know that when we draw near to you, that you draw near to us. And it's good to come and to rejoice in you, to know the joy of our salvation, and to praise the name of Jesus, and to lift the name of Jesus high. Father, as we come to worship this morning, we recognize that so often we can be focused upon ourselves, focused upon what we are going through, our own particular situations, that we focus on our wants and our desires rather than focusing upon you. Lord God, we know that the truth is that when we focus upon you, then we find true freedom, we find true life, we find true hope. And Father, this morning we pray that you would help us to lift up our eyes from ourselves, to lift our eyes towards you, and to give you the glory that you alone are due. We confess, Lord God, that even during this past week, There have been times that we've let you down in our words, in our actions, in our thoughts. Times when we have not lived to your glory and we ask for your forgiveness. Would you thank you, Lord God, that you love us so much that you gave us your son, Jesus, the one who died on the cross for our sin, the one who paid the full price for our sin, that we might know forgiveness and that we might know newness of life. And so, Heavenly Father, as we come before you in repentance and in faith, we are grateful that you hear our prayers and we have the assurance that you forgive us. Heavenly Father, We want to live out our lives fully for you. And we recognize we cannot do this in our own strength. But we thank you for the promised Holy Spirit, the one who infills us, who changes us, and who molds us into the likeness of Christ. Father, may we know the power of the Holy Spirit here in this place and in our individual lives. So, Lord God, we are grateful that we can come to praise your name this morning. And we pray that if we come to this place today and we're weary or worn or sad, that we would know rest for our souls, that we would know Jesus as our good shepherd, and that we would know your presence, your peace, your love for us. So, Lord God, we ask that you would hear this, our prayer, and hear us now as we pray together with the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Okay, I'm going to invite Rona and Shona up, who are going to share something about the backpack appeal. morning. Um, Now, I'm sure you can't quite believe it, but it's getting towards the end of term again. Um, And last year, we did for the first time in this church a school bag appeal, um, and it was a really big success. Um, The church put together, with help from other people in the village, um, over 50 complete kits for kids going back to school last year. 
um, and we're really keen to try and do this again this year. So we really need your support. Um, and once again, um, we've been in touch with the local social work team and they've provided us with a list of um, the different ages and gender of children who would benefit from this. Um, and they will distribute the bags for us. So you can either donate a complete school bag kit, and we'll have lists for you of the items that they would require, or some supplies, or you can make monetary donations and the youth team will make up some bags. Tags with the age and the gender of each child needing a school bag will be placed on the railings at the front of the church building. Today, for one day only, they will also be on the table outside so you can take them as you go. Um, perhaps you or your extended family or group or club would, ex would consider taking one. Any sac second-hand scientific calculators that might be languishing in a drawer somewhere, they would be useful. And I did notice that the bookshop, the charity shop in the village did have some school bags for sale a few weeks ago. So hopefully they'll still be there. Somebody can get them. Um, all donations should be made by Sunday the 30th of July. So that gives us five weeks, I think. And for more information, speak to Shona or myself. So thank you very much in advance. You want to come down and join me here this morning? Okay. Now, one of the things that we try and do at West Kilbride Church is we are family, aren't we? We are church family together. Now, has anyone here had their birthday this week? Was it Flo's birthday? Flo, how old were you, Flo? Four? No way. Absolutely. So I think we should maybe sing Flo happy birthday in just a moment or two because there's someone else here this morning who also had a birthday and I think she's sitting over there, Mary Jack, and uh, she had a special birthday. It ends in a zero, but I can't possibly tell you what age it would be. 21-ish. Okay. Uh, so I thought we would sing happy birthday to Mary as well this morning. Is it? birthday just in case I've missed it out okay so we sing oh it's Ian's birthday <laughs> Ian when was your birthday Wednesday. Wednesday very good so we'll sing happy birthday to Ian uh, as well so we've got Flo it's your dad's birthday in 10 days we'll leave we'll leave that just now <laughs> that's news to your dad I think <laughs> you're shooting through the years Louis so you are okay so we've got Flo and we've got Mary and we've got Ian so we're ready to sing happy birthday? Is that okay? I don't know if you almost get a good flight. Oh yeah, great, thank you. Now, it's good to see all you young folk this morning. Are you looking forward to your school holidays? No way. Going to Turkey for seven days. That sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Absolutely. Because it was kind of raining when we came in this morning, wasn't it? It's was going to have a heavy shower when we came in. Now, over the last number of weeks, we've been looking at kids of the Bible. And we are going to think about some of the stories of kids of the Bible this morning. Okay, and you, I'm going to give you a little quiz. Okay, the adults can maybe join in uh, as well. So, the very first story that we looked at concerned someone who was very tall and someone who was very small. Okay, who took on Goliath with just five pebbles? Who was it? Do you remember who it was, Marion? David. Absolutely. Should we have a look? Okay, and this was the story. We're not going to watch the whole story. Okay, Colin, maybe put the volume up. The only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight Goliath. When Goliath saw him coming, he sneered at him and yelled bad things at David. But David said, you come to me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of Heaven's armies, 
Goliath moved closer to attack, and David quickly ran out to meet him. He hurled a stone from his sling and hit Goliath in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. But he knew the power of God and trusted God to win the battle against the giant. Okay, so our first story was about David and Goliath, and it reminded us, no matter how small we are, if God's on our side, then we're always in the majority and we can trust in him. Okay, the next story we're going to think about. Okay, listen carefully. Who was placed in a basket in the River Nile as a baby? Can you remember? This was a wee while ago. This was maybe five, six weeks ago. Do you remember? And even now, sometimes we place a baby in a basket, and it's a called a certain basket, isn't it? Hmm. Do you remember? Okay, should we ask the adults? Yeah? Should we give the adults a point if they get this right? No. Okay, I think Alison knows. A Moses basket. Okay, so we see the little story of Moses. You see, when Moses was born, his mother saw that he was a special baby. And she kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer keep him a secret, she made a basket and put him in the Nile River among the reeds. Moses' sister stayed to watch what would happen to her baby brother. And soon the Pharaoh's daughter came to the edge of the river. When she saw the basket, hey. she sent her servant to get it. When she saw the baby, she felt sorry for him, uh -huh. thinking he must be an Israelite baby who wasn't supposed to live. <laughs> then Moses' sister asked the princess if she would like her to find an Israelite woman to take care of the baby. So Moses' sister went and got her mother. Moses' own mother took care of him until he was old enough to live in the Pharaoh's house, where the princess adopted him as her son. And so Moses, an Israelite boy who wasn't supposed to live, became the adopted grandson of the Pharaoh and lived in the palace as God prepared him for a great destiny that was only just starting to unfold. Okay, so we thought about Moses, and we thought about how God <laughs> protected Moses and watched over him, and then used Moses in an amazing way. Okay, now, the next story is a little bit more, well, more unfamiliar. That's not really a phrase, but you know what I mean. Okay, not as familiar as our other stories, okay? So you're ready for the question? I'd be really impressed if you get this one, okay? Who became king as a young boy and turned the people of Israel back to God. Mm, became a king when he was eight. Okay, does John have it? No? Do you know? No? Yes? You, you know it. Okay, that's good. Good when the minister's wife knows the answer. Okay. Okay. Any kid know? No? Okay. Who are we going for? Okay, Anna. Okay, Josiah. Do you want to remember, do you remember the story of Josiah? Here we go. Stories of the Bible. Josiah. This is Josiah. Josiah became king of Judah when he was only eight years old. Yep. Now Judah had a long line of kings who did many bad things, including Josiah's father and grandfather. These kings did not follow after God, and they ignored his commandments and his law. But when Josiah became king, he did what God wanted him to and followed the example of King David. Yeah! Okay, so there we go. So Josiah was a young king, but he followed in the right way. Okay, and even when we're young, we can follow in the right way. Now the next one, okay, who was called by God when they were sleeping? Remember that one? Remember they were in the temple? And there was someone called Eli, and there was a young boy, and he kept hearing this voice. Do you remember that one? Okay, do you remember what his name was? It begins with a S. What do we think? Samuel. That's exactly right, Marion. Okay, so this is the story of Samuel. 
In those days, messages from God were rare. <sighs> but one night after Eli had gone to bed, Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle when suddenly God called out, Samuel! Samuel got up and ran to Eli and said, Did you call me? Call me? Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel did. Then God called out again, Samuel. Huh? And again, Samuel got up and ran to Eli asking, Did you call me? Call me? Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel did. God called Samuel for a third time, Samuel. Huh? And Samuel went to Eli yet again. Hmm. After three times, Eli realized that God was trying to speak to Samuel. So Eli taught Samuel to say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Okay. Samuel went back to bed, and God came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, your servant is listening. God told him many things about what would happen to Israel. Okay, so the story of Samuel, okay? That God can speak to us no matter what age we are, God is able to speak to us, okay? Now the next one, okay, so we've got two left, I think. So, this is a story about Jesus. And do you remember that some people came to Jesus and they were bringing their children, okay? Now, did Jesus, A, tell them to go away because this was no place for children, or did he, B, tell the parents not to stop bringing the children because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these? What do you think it is, A or B? B. B, definitely B. Okay, should we see? One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. Ah, uh, hold on there. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. Okay, so you are right. Okay, Jesus said that the children were welcome to come to him. That's why you are so welcome here at church. Uh, on a Sunday morning and other times too. Okay, the last one. You ready for this one? Okay. It's hard. It is hard. Okay. Are you ready? Who told Naaman's wife that there was a prophet in Israel who could heal Naaman? Do you remember Naaman had a really bad skin disease? But who told Naaman's wife that he could go to a prophet and the prophet would heal him? Do you remember? Is that Judy? What girl? Correct answer. Okay, so do you want to watch it? Here we go. Stories of the Bible. Naaman is healed. This is Naaman, who was a great leader in the army of the king of Aram. Though Naaman was a mighty warrior, he had leprosy, which made him have sores all over his body. Naaman had a maid in his house who was a young girl from Israel. This young girl served Naaman's wife. One day, the girl told Naaman's wife, I wish my master would go to see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. Huh, really? Yep. So Naaman went to the king of Aram and told him what the young girl had said. Wow. Okay, so what I hope you've learned over these last number of weeks, is that no matter what age we are, whether we're somewhere between Flo at four and Alistair at eight, that God can use us and God is with us. It doesn't matter what age we are. And we see in the Bible all these young people that God has used for his glory. Now, that was seven of the stories. In fact, that was six of the stories. We did a seventh story. What was the seventh story? Now, someone mentioned it. Susie, you mentioned it. No? It was. Okay, so, we also had the feeding of the 5,000. And do you remember Jesus had all these people in front of them, and they had no food to, to feed them with apart from a boy, a young boy. And what did he have? A fish and some bread. 
Okay, now, what I want you to do, I want you to get on your feet, okay? And around the church somewhere, there are loaves of bread and there's fish. You go and get them. Go and bring them for me. Go on, on you go. Okay. Okay, how many have we got here? What have we got? Oh, we've got two fish here. Okay. Oh, up there we go. Well done. Okay, so. You want to count how many fish we've got? How many fish do we have? Two fish. Two fish. And how many bits of bread? Okay, we've got... Oh, they're all stuck together. Okay, so we've got two fish and five loaves of bread. And remember that from all just that amount of food, Jesus fed 5,000 men and women and children. Huge crowd of people. And it was all from this boy's lunchbox, really. Okay? And it reminds us. And there was 12 baskets left over as well, wasn't there? Okay? It's amazing what Jesus can do. Yeah, it could have been 15,000 people. That's amazing, isn't it? Absolutely is. Okay? Okay, we're going to think about that story uh, just later on. You're staying in our service today, young folks. Okay? And we're going to think about the feeding of the 5,000. But what we're going to do, we are going to sing now, and we're going to sing, Lord, I lift your name on high. Okay? And remember, we've got the actions. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us, okay? You came from heaven to earth to show the way, from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Okay, so let's stand and sing to God's prayer.
Okay, well done everyone. Youngsters, if you want to go back to uh, sit where you were sitting before, okay? That would be excellent. And we're going to read together. We're going to read from Mark chapter 6. This is the story of the feeding of the 5,000. And Katrina is going to come and read that for us today. So, Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 44. Jesus feeds the 5,000. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. But many people recognized him and saw them leaving. And people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said, you feed them. With what? they asked. We'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. How much bread do you have? he asked. Go and find out. They came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of 50 or 100. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up towards heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. A total of 5,000 men and their families were fed. May God bless us with this reading from his holy word. Now we're going to sing together once more and we're going to sing My Heart is Filled with Thankfulness.
Now, if you do have your Bible with you this morning, uh, please do turn back to Mark chapter 6. We're just going to briefly look uh, at this passage this morning. So youngsters, don't worry too, too much. I'm not going to be uh, too long uh, today. Now, at this time of year, you cannot avoid, can you, people speaking about being on holiday. The schools finish uh, on Wednesday uh, coming up. Uh, school prize giving has already passed. We had their service here uh, just on Thursday. Uh, we also had the nursery graduation uh, on Wednesday. And so people are thinking about holidays and where they're going on holiday. And the man's family uh, are no different. It's good, isn't it, to have a holiday, whether it's a staycation or a vacation, to have a break, a time of refreshment, and a time to rest. Now, of course, it's well known, isn't it, that the word holiday comes from holy day. And even though you don't have anything in the Bible about a two-week package holiday, uh, there's plenty, isn't there, about festivals and celebrations. However, it's this passage from the feeding of the 5,000 that's been on my mind recently, and I've shared little devotionals at the team leaders meeting and the Kirk session from this passage. You see, I don't really want to focus this morning too much on the the feeding of the 5,000 miracle. What I want to focus on is what happens before that miracle. You see, it's been a busy and somewhat emotional time for Jesus and the disciples. The disciples have been sent out on a ministry trip by Jesus. They've done some amazing miracles in the name of Jesus and have been teaching also. And then they come back to Jesus, and I guess that they would be fairly enthused about all that has gone on, and they were probably saying, oh, it was great, and this person was healed, and that person was healed, and it was just wonderful, and and then we taught this about the kingdom, and people were were really responsive. You can imagine, they were just really, really excited. And Jesus says to the disciples, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place. And rest a while. Now just pausing there, that is a really important verse, isn't it? Because Jesus clearly saw the place for rest and refreshment. He knew that the disciples couldn't continue on with with ministry without some rest. And indeed that's why having a Sabbath is a creation ordinance. So if you're here this morning and you're a workaholic who struggles to take time off, then right here's your permission to take time off. It is good for you to take time off, to rest, to have some time for for relaxation. If Jesus saw the place for rest, then so should we. You see, it says here in our passage that there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and the disciples didn't even have enough time to eat. Such was the the hubbub. I'm sure that there are many in today's society that are are so busy, and maybe this is you yourself, you're you're so busy that it's only a snatch sandwich at, at lunchtime if you can manage it. But I want you to see this morning there is a place for rest. And so what I want you to see today is that Jesus takes the disciples on an overseas holiday. You notice that? It's wonderful. He takes them overseas. It's like going over to Cumbria or going over to Arran. They leave in a boat for a quiet place. But something happens as they leave because as they leave, what happens? Well, they're recognized. Now, that's probably not just because of Jesus' ministry. But what have the disciples been doing? Well, they've been going round on a ministry trip. And so it seems to me that when they're all together, people recognize, oh, he's the guy that was at our village. And so when Jesus and the disciples get to their destination, instead of it being a quiet place, there is a huge crowd waiting for them. It's a bit like, you know, you wake up on a, a sunny day in the summer, And you think, do you know, I just fancy going overseas to Cumbria. But then you get to Largs, and what do you see? Huge queue 
all the way to company, you get over to company, there's crowds everywhere, you're like, oh, just wanted some peace and quiet to enjoy it all to myself. It's a huge crowd waiting for Jesus and the disciples. Now, I don't think it's a stretch of the imagination or a stretch of this text to say that the disciples are disappointed. Because it seems to me that later in the afternoon, when the disciples come to Jesus and basically tell Jesus, look, send these crowds away, they're wondering whether they can salvage something of their retreat, something of their holiday with Jesus. I think they're disappointed when they go over and see all these crowds. But how does Jesus act to this holiday, this retreat, being interrupted? How do we react when our holiday or our planned break is interrupted? Has that ever happened to you? Where you're on holiday? Have you ever been on holiday and you go somewhere and then you go on holiday and you find your next door neighbours have actually gone to the same place as you have? That happened to me once, a long time ago. It's a bit annoying, isn't it? Oh, just wanted a break. Now someone's interrupting my peace. If we're honest, sometimes when our planned break is interrupted, there can be a lack of grace. We can huff and puff. After all, we just wanted to rest. And of course, we've seen there is a place for rest, isn't there? But how does Jesus react? Well, he's not like us, is he? Because he sees the people and they're like sheep without a shepherd. They look lost. And Jesus has compassion on them. Now, the the word for compassion here means that that Jesus is moved to his very core. It's not like he just kind of looks and thinks, oh, well, better teach them, I suppose. He's not like that. He really feels something for them. He sees them. He has real compassion on them. I was listening to a sermon on this this week, and the, the person who was preaching says that in the sun with people wearing probably white as their their headdress they probably literally looked like sheep and Jesus has compassion on them and so Jesus gives up his holiday to teach the people now it's interesting isn't it that the people are desperate to see Jesus and the disciples and other and in other places we know that it's the miracles that have attracted the people isn't it generally speaking. But here, what's Jesus' immediate reaction? Is it to heal people? No, it's not. Is it to do miracles? Not straight away. What's Jesus' immediate reaction? It's to teach the people. Why? Because that's what they need. That's what they need. They need to be taught about the kingdom. What is it that we need as people? We need to be taught about the kingdom. We need to get into God's word. That's what sustains us. And so Jesus teaches the people. Now please note here, this is not therefore a vindication for the workaholic saying, look, Jesus was interrupted and he still had to work. And you know, that's a bit like me at work. That's what happens to me. Because what do we see? Well, later on we see that Jesus takes some time to himself. After the crowds are dismissed, He goes away himself to pray. He takes a break. We need to rest. And during our months of recreation that we're having in the church here, we need to rest. We need to recuperate as a church family. But I want you to notice also, and to note also, that during these months, where hopefully the weather's a wee bit better, and we have had some good weather, and we've maybe managed to get away on holiday. During these times when we're to have a break, we don't stop being a Christian. When you go off to South Uist, or you go off to Yorkshire, or you go off to Turkey, or you go off to France, or wherever you're going, it's not like you just leave your Christianity at the door and say, I'm no longer a Christian, I'm off duty, and that's me. We're still a Christian, aren't we? And if God gives us an opportunity to minister, then we need to take that opportunity. We need to have compassion as Jesus had compassion. 
And so Jesus, what does he do? He feeds the people spiritually. He teaches them. And then what else does he do? He feeds them physically. Now, of course, we all know this miracle. The children even know uh, the miracle. How many loaves were there? Hello? There were five. Absolutely. How many fish were there? There were two fish. Two fish. And just five loaves and two fish. They fed all these people, 5,000 men and their families. But there's something else I also want you to notice this morning from this passage. You see, I want you to notice, and this is your homework, okay? I'm not going to be here for the next three weeks, so this is your homework. In this passage, there are lots of echoes of the Old Testament. You see, the phrase, sheep without a shepherd, appears in Numbers 27, where Moses seeks that the Lord will appoint someone to follow him (coughs) to lead the people of Israel. Moses had been leading the people all this time. He knew his time was coming to an end. And so he says to the Lord, these people are like sheep without a shepherd. Who are you going to send after me? And the Lord, of course, sent Joshua. Also in Numbers, the people of Israel are miraculously provided by the Lord bread, manna, and meat, quail to eat. There are parallels here, aren't there? And here in Mark's Gospel, Jesus has the disciples sit down in groups of 50 or 100. Now, what are they sitting down on? You ever thought about this? The grass. Exactly right. Now, interestingly, in Matthew's gospel and John's gospel, it mentions the grass. Luke's gospel doesn't mention the grass. But only Mark's gospel says it's the green grass. That's interesting, isn't it? Now, you know green grass is green. We know that, don't we? Why is it significant? What did we start the service with today? Psalm 23. What does it say in that psalm? The Lord is my shepherd. What have we just seen? The people were like sheep without a shepherd. I have all that I need. What does Jesus do? He feeds them. He lets me rest in green meadows. Or as other translations have it, green fields. What are the people sitting down on? The green grass. So here is Jesus, shepherd of the sheep, giving the people what they need. Their physical needs met, their spiritual needs met. He works so that people can rest in him. And so I encourage you, this summer period, in our months of recreation, especially if you're really weary today, if you just feel, I don't know the direction of my life, or you're just ground down, I encourage you from this passage, rest in Jesus. Know that he's your good shepherd and rest in him. I want you just to imagine that you were there that day. Huge crowds waiting for Jesus, waiting for the disciples to come in that boat, a bit uncertain about what was going to happen. But Jesus takes charge. That's what we want in our lives, isn't it? For Jesus to take charge, Jesus to teach us. And then can you imagine that moment you're listening to Jesus, you're feeling a little bit hungry, what does Jesus say? Look, just get into groups and have a seat. Sit on the grass, relax. And what do the disciples do? They bring them food. It's a lovely holiday for the 5,000 odd people that are there. Maybe that's you this morning. You're in that crowd. You just want some rest. Well, you can rest in Jesus because he is your good shepherd. Shall we just pray together? Let's pray. Lord God, at this time of year, we are often thinking about uh, going on holiday. And we are so thankful for this passage today because we recognize that for some of us, as we come this morning, we are workaholics. We're constantly on the go. We don't really feel uh, that we should rest because we feel guilty when we do rest. But Lord God, we thank you that rest Recuperation is a creation ordinance that we are created to rest. 
And we thank you, Lord God, that we can rest in you. Sometimes, Lord God, we recognize that in our lives we can be disrupted. That our lives can be taken away from the ordinary things and go in a different direction than we expected. But Lord God, sometimes these disruptions give us an opportunity for ministry. And we pray that you would help us, Lord God, when these opportunities happen. That you would give us the strength to do what you've called us to do. And to be salt and light as you've called us to be. But Father, as we come to you this morning, perhaps we just feel a bit weary. Perhaps we feel a bit like that crowd, like sheep without a shepherd. But we thank you, Lord God, that when we look deeply into this passage, that we see the parallels with Psalm 23, that Jesus is our shepherd, the very one who we need, who watches over us, who protects us, the one who provides for us, and the one in whom we can rest. Lord God, help us to rest in Jesus this day. Heavenly Father, as we come to you this day, we also want to pray for all that's happening in our world at this time. We continue to pray for the war in Ukraine and all that's happening in Russia. Some very strange things going on there that we don't really understand. But Father, we pray that you would bring a measure of peace, that you would be with your people there, and in the midst of the uncertainty, Lord God, you would lead your people and guide them. We pray for those who are downcast in our world, for those who are struggling because of civil war, those who are recovering after natural disaster, and those who have lost loved ones. Father, surround them with your love and your care. We pray, Lord God, for our own nation, for those in authority over us, for our king and his family, for the government and for all who represent us. And we pray, Lord God, for those who are struggling in our nation, those who are homeless, those who are struggling with issues of addiction, those who are struggling with the, law, the, the cost of living crisis. Father, be with them and bless them today. And Father, we pray for our own needs. We remember those who are unwell, those in hospital, those who are undergoing treatment. Father, may your hand of healing and blessing be upon them. And for those who are grieving this day, for those who know the pain of loss, Father, surround them with your love, strengthen them, and give them your peace. So loving Lord God, we thank you for all your grace. We thank you for your goodness. And we pray that you would help us to rest in you this day. For we pray these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Now, just before we sing our final hymn together, just a reminder, uh, and a reminder to the kids who have been superb this morning, thank you so much, okay? There are biscuits and there's juice through in the hall. Eat as many biscuits as you want this morning. Your parents are not looking. Okay, be, be, okay. be, be reasonable. Leave some for your parents, okay? Uh, and for others, there is tea and coffee this morning. Please do go through uh, for that time of fellowship. Uh, we also have the prayer team this morning who will be willing to pray for you. If you have anything in your life that you would like prayer for, please don't leave this place today thinking, you know, I really felt God did not meet with me today. There are people who are willing to pray with you today. Please come down to the front after our service uh, and receive uh, some prayer this morning. But let's sing together as we close our service. We're going to sing, Be Thou My Vision.
And now go in peace, go in joy, go in love. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and remain with you this day and forevermore.